Breaking tonight, according to The Hill's John Solomon, we now have major evidence of election collusion in 2016, real evidence to back it up. This collusion surrounds Hillary Clinton and a top Ukrainian government official that wanted her elected. We're going to have all the details coming up with John Solomon. But before we get to our top story, ask yourself a couple of questions. Is this going to be investigated for three years, two by Mueller, one by the FBI, and is, in Mueller's case, a merry band of Democratic donors? Will the mainstream media even cover what is a damning story with tapes? We're not going to hold our breath. We have that story and so much more tonight. We first turn our attention to Hannity Watch on the alarming crop of 2020 Democratic hopefuls. Democrats are now pushing, let's see, to give 16-year-olds the right to vote. You can't drink till you're 21 promising to stack the Supreme Court till they get enough justices that think their way and will legislate from the bench. They are proposing an end to the Electoral College. Now, what is happening, we will break it down. This is a scary attempt by politicians to centralize power and control the lives of you, we, the American people. And right now, it is the party line among almost all the radical Democrats running to be president in 2020, a blatant, dramatic, frightening attempt to alter America in ways that will make it unrecognizable, forever destroy the greatest economic wealth creation system in the history of mankind. Now, last night during a friendly interview with so-called comedian Jimmy Kimmel, our old friend, Senator Kamala Harris became the latest Democratic candidate to express support for an end to the Electoral College. Take a look. Senator Warren, Elizabeth Warren, had a town hall last night, and she said that she thinks we should do away with the Electoral College. Is, is that, do you agree with that? I think that it's, I'm open to the discussion. I mean, there's no question that um, the popular vote has been diminished in terms of making the final decision about who's the president of the United States, and we need to deal with that. Um, so I'm open to the discussion. All right, now Senator Harris, uh, Elizabeth Warren, Kirsten Gillibrand, and many Democrats support an end to the constitutional process by which we have always elected the president of the United States. So. Why is this a big deal? All right, we turn quickly tonight to a Hannity history lesson on the Electoral College to give you an explanation. Now, when our Constitution was drafted in 1787, the framers of the Constitution, they sought to rectify what was a very challenging conundrum. How do you create a limited central government strong enough to defend its people against serious threats, but decentralized enough to prevent consolidation and subsequent abuse of power. The result was a constitution filled with checks, balances, shared power between the individual states, the federal government. The Electoral College is a product of this system, giving the states the power to conduct elections and choose the president. As a result, each state holds some power in determining the executive branch. Let me explain. Without the Electoral College, and our framers knew this, small areas with dense populations, in other words, New York, New Jersey, Illinois, California, they would monopolize the keys to the White House. And look at how all four of those states have been destroyed by the people in those states that elected liberal socialist politicians. Everywhere else, in other words, all of red America would pretty much totally be ignored. Don't take it from me. Listen to what Obama's former campaign manager had to say about this. Take a listen. Just from a campaign manager standpoint, when I ran President Obama's campaign, we would never go to a small state if there was no electoral college. You'd go to the major media markets, you would not go to Iowa, you wouldn't go to Montana, you wouldn't go to New Hampshire. You know, I think any proposal about getting rid of the electoral college, I understand the concern, and the concern is real that we've had two presidents get elected without winning a popular vote, but I agree with Charlie, that's not going to happen. All right, in other words, power would be totally consolidated, was a scenario our framers, our founders, feared the most. It's one of the reasons, look at the quote of Thomas Jefferson. He hated cities, writing that they're harmful to, quote, the morals, the health, and the liberties of man. He was smart, way ahead of his time. And for hundreds of years, yes, the Electoral College played an integral role in decentralizing power of a central government, keeping the United States united. You think all those red states would stick around and be in the United States if they kept losing to New York, New Jersey, California, and Illinois? 
I tend to think not. Now, Democrats don't share the values of our framers. They want power for themselves, and they want it at all costs. And that's why every major proposal they are now pushing begins and ends with their power and a centralized federal government that they control. Government-run health care, a complete takeover of the health care industry, yes, run by the state. Remember Kamala Harris and others? They want to end all private health care. That impacts 200 million Americans. I thought they were pro-choice. Government-run education. Now they're going to add pre-K and college education. They haven't done a bad enough job with kindergarten through 12th grade. And they'll have government consolidation of all guns and gun laws. Government-run clean energy through the government takeover of the energy sector. In other words, they will take it over. No more oil and gas is their proposal for 10 years or we're going to die. Government-run universal income, government-paid-for retirement, government-paid-for vacation, government-sponsored healthy food. Now, many of these 2020 candidates even want government to control the means of production. In other words, through the socialist Green New Deal, they propose that they'll tell you how to run your business. Government promises for everything, for everybody. You're gonna, you'll never have a worry in the world. But you'll also give up all of your freedom and all of the wealth creation systems that we have built up to this point in our history. And we're going to explain how even the poorest in America have it so much better than so many other people around the globe. I'll have a mini monologue detailing this destructive. What socialism mean? What this agenda would do to the country later in the program? We'll do something that, well, no Democrat seems capable of. We'll actually do the math, tell you how much your paycheck the Democrats want to take. It's pretty close to 100%. And if Democrats get their way, this country, as we know it, it's going to be over. It's done. It will not be the United States of America as we know it. All right. But first, we turn our Hannity watch on the Mueller witch hunt and we'll get to our breaking news. And another sign that the probe is in its final stage. Special counsel attorneys requested an extension for a court filing related to the Manafort case because they were too busy with, quote, the press of other work. Maybe they're writing a report after nearly three years. Now, today, President Trump said he wants that report to be available for all Americans. Take a listen. Let it come out. Let people see it. That's up to the attorney general. We have a very good attorney general. He's a very highly respected man. And we'll see what happens. I want to see the report. And you know who want to see it? The tens of millions of people that love the fact that we have the greatest economy we've ever had. I know nothing about it. I know that he's conflicted, and I know that his best friend is Comey, who's a bad cop, and I know that there are other things, obviously. You know, I had a business transaction with him uh, that I've reported many times that you people don't talk about, but I had a nasty business transaction with him uh, and other things. I know that he uh, put 13 highly conflicted and, you know, very angry. I call them angry Democrats in. With all of that being said, I look forward to seeing the report. Now, here's the ironic thing. Thanks to Democrats, after the impeachment of Bill Clinton, the president has no say whatsoever in that decision whether to make the findings public. The attorney general and only the attorney general will decide. Now, tonight, as we await the Mueller report, I want to get back to how this all began. This is important because people need to absorb exactly what this is all predicated on. Now, according to then lead FBI investigator Peter Strzok and top FBI lawyer Lisa Page, after nine months of an FBI investigation beginning in July of 2016, there was they found no evidence of Trump-Russia collusion nine months before Mueller. Still after the president rightly fired Comey, which even Comey acknowledges the president has to do, has the right to do for any reason or no reason at all. Well, then the deputy AG, Rod Rosenstein, well, he appointed the special counsel, his friend Robert Mueller, to continue the FBI's investigation into so-called collusion. Remember, Jeff Sessions recused himself. Now, Mueller's mandate was as follows. Investigate, quote, any links and or coordination between the Russian government and individuals associated with the campaign of President Donald Trump. And this part that everyone seems to forget. Any matters that arose or may arise directly from the investigation. 
Now, we've seen Robert Mueller prosecute various Trump associates for process crimes. We saw Mueller prosecute Paul Manafort for crimes that had nothing to do with his time with Trump, Russia collusion, and he worked for the Trump campaign. We watched Mueller prosecute a Russian troll farm, actually a number of them, filled with people who will never be extradited and tried in the United States to face justice, and Russian intel people. They will never be tried. They will never be extradited. But oddly enough, we haven't seen Mueller prosecute matters that arose from or involving Democrats or Clinton allies. Where we ask tonight is the Mueller investigation into whether or not the Clinton campaign used money and used and funneled that money to an ex-foreign spy, Christopher Steele, who hated Donald Trump, who then colluded with Russia in the development of the dirty dossier. We know the dossier is filled with Russian lies and Ukrainian lies and total propaganda. Where's the Mueller investigation into FISA abuse? After all, there's clear and compelling and incontrovertible evidence that a Trump campaign associate was spied on by federal officials. The bulk of the information in the FISA application was that Hillary bought and paid for a Russian dossier. By the way, and they never told the court that Hillary paid for it. Where is the Mueller investigation into the coordination and the effort of the State Department to use the Clinton bought and paid for a Russian dossier to take down Donald Trump, who they wish didn't win the election. Where's the Mueller investigation into Uranium One? Remember that case? Russians, we knew in the United States, because we actually had an FBI agent in there that was reporting back bribery, kickbacks, money laundering, and all sorts of racketeering. We know Bill Clinton at the time took a massive payment from a Russian bank related to Uranium One and met with Vladimir Putin uh, in Russia. We know the Clinton Foundation raked in, oh, about $145 million from Uranium One executives. And we know Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State. Well, she was one of a number of people signing off on that deal, the Uranium One deal. That's right, giving 20% of America's uranium to Russia and Putin. By the way, the foundational material for nuclear weapons, and we don't have enough on our own. We import uranium. And where's the Mueller investigation into this damning news story, which we now get to tonight from John Solomon? We know tonight that a high ranking government official in Ukraine actively tried to benefit the Clinton campaign in 2016. This is breaking tonight, according to Solomon. Ukraine's top prosecutor has opened a criminal probe into whether senior law enforcement officials in that country tried to sway the U.S election, influence our election, to help Hillary Clinton win. Now, a tape recording released by a member of the Ukrainian parliament captured an official talking about leaking Manafort financial records in the middle of the 2016 election for the stated purpose to help Hillary Clinton. A Ukrainian court even ruled the leak was an improper effort to influence the American election. That's not all. According to this report by John Solomon, Ukraine's top prosecutor accused the U.S. Embassy of interfering in corruption prosecutions inside the country, including one probe into the alleged misuse of an American aid. And a letter surfaced from a senior member of Congress to Secretary Pompeo accusing the current U.S. ambassador in Kiev of bad-mouthing the Trump administration. Now, this is exactly what Mark Meadows was talking about Tuesday on this show. So where's the Mueller investigation into these matters? After all, it's already under investigation in the country of Ukraine. There's a tape recording that has all this information. Where's equal justice under our laws? Where's equal application of our laws? There was no Trump-Russia collusion, as we now know from, well, the FBI told us after nine months. Then, of course, the House Intel Committee told us, and then the Senate Intel Committee told us. And as Congressman Nunes pointed out many years ago, by the way, 2014, he was among many people, by the way, to do this. Russian interference, he told us, is a real threat. He warned us in 2014. And not to, can't, not to the Trump campaign. Instead, by the way, it's power-obsessed Clintons who may have been the most susceptible. That's where the r real collusion it ends up, ends up being. And this week, big news, we learned.